I'm Jim Kramer, and welcome to my world. You need to get in the game. Firms are going to go out of business, and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And I promise Mad you money. Just you can't afford again. to miss it. Coming up, airborne. What is your location over? Excellus makes mission critical technology that helps protect our country. Excellent is it positioned call. to defend your portfolio or could budget cutbacks put it at risk? Kramer's running reconnaissance to find out when he talks with the company's CEO just ahead. I'm always talking about breakup plays here at Mad Money, about companies that can create value for their shareholders simply by splitting themselves up into smaller, more focused units. And that's why tonight I wanted to check in on the product of one of the last year's big breakups, ITT Excellus, XLS is the symbol, which was formerly the defense business of the old ITT before it was spun off last fall. Investors initially applauded the ITT breakup. The stock popped 17% on the news. But ever since the spinoff, Excellus has basically been flying under the radar. Only four analysts covered the darn thing, and all of them made it a hold. Stock is actually down 10% since the breakup last October, but mostly because of worries about the fiscal cliff. If Congress can't get its act together, then starting next year, we could see major cuts to defense spending. And given that Excellus gets 70%, 70 that's 7 of its sales from the Department of Defense, you can see why people would be nervous. However, I think those worries might be baked into the stock at these levels. As a matter of fact, it may even be exaggerated. That's my view. We'll hear more. Plus, Excel sports a juicy 4% yield, which means even if the worst does happen, they're paying you to wait for Washington to sort itself out. The other thing that Excel represents is a niche area within the budget. So I, I, it's not really one of those big old Cold War programs that they have. I, I don't know if we should even be that worried. Among the other things the company makes is highly secure communication systems, imaging analysis, electronic warfare systems, along with radar reconnaissance and acoustic systems and night vision goggles. But Excellus also has an information tech technical side where they do everything from air traffic management for the FAA to advanced networks. And that's probably less sensitive to the budget cuts we're also worried about. Company last quarter was quite strong. I mean, it was a terrific number. Uh, and so if we don't fall off the fiscal cliff, you know what? This could be the right stock to own. Even if we do smash into the fiscal retaining wall, Excellus is a $10 stock, three points off its high, trading at six times next year's earnings. I just don't think there's much risk here. Don't take it from me. Let's talk to David Melcher, the president and CEO of Excellus, who also happens to be a retired lieutenant general from the Army, where he dealt with budget issues at the highest levels of the Pentagon. Mr. Melcher, welcome to Man Money. Thank you so Thanks, much. Jay. Have a seat. Thank you. Appreciate it. First, David. We like companies that get more focused, that mm -hmm. were conglomerates and they boil down to different divisions. What does it mean and how much better can you be standing alone than you could be as part of a larger conglomerate? Well, you know, I think that there are a lot of benefits. We are more focused in our investments. Uh, we're able to control our destiny with respect to the portfolio and merger and acquisition activity. Uh, and I think certainly we are focusing solely on being a defense aerospace and networking company as opposed to worrying about the other products that were part of the former ITT. Okay, uh, I think that there has been maybe too much uh, hoopla about this fiscal cliff. And the reason I say that, even though I know in your interview with TheStreet.com, you said it could have a huge impact, the kinds of programs you're involved in are not gigantic Cold War programs that perhaps should be slated anyway for defense uh, for defense cuts. I mean, aren't your programs niche enough that you may not even feel it if there is sequestration? Well, we absolutely have capabilities that are not platform dependent, right? right? Not the, platform, that's the key term. The big right. savings come from uh, taking platforms out of the inventory. And what we do is we provide things that go onto those platforms or for soldier systems like the radios and the night vision goggles and the jammers that we put into aircraft right. and uh, vehicles. So we have a lot of capabilities that are very compatible with the Department of Defense stated priorities as they go forward in the Pacific and other places right. that they think are important. Now, the thing that was most unnerving when I read all your presentations is the Defense Department really hasn't given any guidance what's going to happen. No, they haven't. I mean, but that's a little weird, isn't it? We're just a few months away. Well, you know, I mean, our customer in some ways doesn't know any more than the defense industry does at this point about where the cuts will be. I think that they're taking a hard look at the programs and where they might take those cuts. Right. And OMB has said it could be about a 9% uh, cut across right. all the programs. But for our part, we've taken a look program by program, and we think we can do better than the overall market will be. All right. You have this very niche, uh, let's call it electronic warfare, all right, where I feel that 
but our country has an edge because of you. At the same time, you have international business. Mm -hmm. How do you keep the bad guys from getting the good stuff? Well, there are very detailed rules about okay. technology transfer that we are entirely compatible with. So we can sell night vision goggles, but it is not the highest grade of night vision goggles okay. that our own troops use. The same is true for electronic warfare. Some things like jammers, uh, we have only been able to sell it to one country, Australia, okay. uh, who has favored yeah, I don't want the, uh, the other guys to get it. Exactly. Now, there is a Pacific capability that you mentioned. There is no one, and I'm t quoting my friend David Faber, there's no one who knows how to get secrets and exploit them than, better than the Chinese, who I understand because, of, look, there's a lot of saber rattling. we got to keep a lot of the technology out of their hands. How much time and effort do you spend to make sure the Chinese don't have what we have? Well, you know, I mean, certainly in terms of the security of our systems and our networks, that's a top priority because, you know, you cannot allow this, this technological advantage to get into the hands of right. folks who would use it in a manner you don't want. So we work that very hard. And by the way, cybersecurity is an integral part of everything we do with networks, right. from FAA to NASA networks uh, to the Department of Defense networks. Right, and it's important to point out FAA to, uh, at the air traffic, this is not sequestration kind of activity. No, 30%, as you mentioned, of our portfolio okay? is, is FAA and NASA networks. When you watched the Curiosity okay. landing on Mars, you saw our communications work for NASA in play because that was all integral to that effort. Okay. Uh, and we have international customers, about 10% of revenues, commercials about 4 or 5%. Okay, now Lockheed Martin the other day boosted its dividend, went from a dollar to a dollar fifteen. Mm -hmm. I look at Lockheed Martin's product portfolio, and to me, I'm far more worried about what they have, and that's a great company, and the stock's been terrific, and I really like the management. But they are able to boost their dividend without, you know, pretty close to the fiscal cliff. You've got that 4% yield. Uh, I know you've, you've sworn by it, but is the possibility that you could do something like Lockheed Martin actually raise it, or do you have to just wait to see what happens before you would even recommend Jim, it? Jim, I think we need to wait to see what happens. And we have some other financial pressures. We have a, a, a pension that was part of the transfer right. from IGT. I was going to get into that, but you know, you've pretty covered that. But you know, yep. go ahead, go ahead. And, and so you know, we've got some other uses of the cash that we have to uh, attend to. But we certainly want to look out for our shareholders, and that's why we started with a, a very competitive dividend. OK, now, the, uh, what can you use and expand into more civilian stuff, your high tech. In other words, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, yes, you're more focused, but it, there's no, no one that says you have to do nothing but defense. No, absolutely. And so, for example, our commercial payloads right. for imagery, we're trying to market those internationally, and we have the, the ability to do that. Night Vision has commercial applications. Right. We have a commercial air structure composites business that is both for military applications mm -hmm. as well as big companies like Boeing and Airbus. Uh, and so we're trying to expand that boundary as well as we can going forward because it represents opportunities, and it's close to our core. Yeah, see, I just think, I don't know, I mean, I look at all these defense stocks because I love high-yielding stocks. And everyone I'm, I'm worried about, and yours I'm worried about the least, because it seems like you have always had in mind that one day the big projects might end, mm -hmm. and you've got to stay niche. And you've done that very effectively. And we're going to continue to do that and create affordable solutions for our customer to upgrade those things in the system that they won't be able to buy new anymore. Okay, and I don't want to get my dad mad at me. Thank you for service, for Thanks your for service, his service being a general. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, David yeah. Melcher, President and CEO of Excellus. XLS. Inexpensive stock, even if we hit the retaining wall. After the break, I'll try to make you more money. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir.